Good morning, we're at ITSF 2019 in Brighton and this morning I'm interviewing Umut Keaton from Turk Telecom. Good morning Umut. Good morning Carol, thank you. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that the required clock accuracy for 5G ranges from a few nanoseconds to a maximum of 1.5 microseconds. Can you give me some examples where nanosecond accuracy is needed? Yeah, I remember that, I did. <laughs> and the funny thing is, uh, well, current, uh, yeah, current we only need one and a, below one and a half microseconds, that's true. But yeah, we all know the coordinated PUHA is going to be here as well. And we all know that it's, yeah, it's not a few nanoseconds, but it's 130 nanoseconds to 260 nanoseconds. So the future is, clo is always closer than we always expect. So we have to be ready for that. And the presentation what I give gave and yeah, the how to put it uh, nicely, the uh, what we did and the results what we have are actually also in line with this. So we mm -hmm. really have a solution for the future as well. Yeah, okay. Um, You've presented an approach to delivering this, this level of time inaccuracy, which you described as GPS independence. Yes. Can you explain how this method differs from the standard PTP solution? Okay. Uh, well, actually, uh, all end devices require PTP. We, we still uh, transport the PTP, but the way we transport it is unrelated to the current standards. Uh, for example, the ITT has described the at and 8275.1 and dot two, uh, we yeah fail to implement that properly because of it's very complicated to do it. Uh, we've we started thinking out of the box. We thought like okay, what is the current standard uh, providing us? But why does it fail? And then we realized like because there are so many layers to make it that standard uh, to cope with that standard we realized, okay, we need something simpler. So that's why we created an overlay network where we can transport the PTP again. And this is what we did. This is our approach. Okay, so what, what do you see are the benefits of this approach compared with other techniques, both in cost, implementation time, and reliability? Okay, uh, yeah, this is so much better. The results are definitely better. Uh, Cost-wise, because we don't need to upgrade the whole network, well, the network can stay as it is. This only requires a point-to-point -point, uh, yeah, tunneling method. So what we do is actually we create an overlay network with DTM. And this works like a GRE tunnel type of trunk. And over this trunk, we transport the PTP actually directly to the point where it's needed. And operating this, is so much easier because now you have a responsible for the synchronization which is that overlay network and with current traditional means you don't have that mm. because there are so many layers of network and legacy parts least parts uh, when there is a fault it is actually nobody's responsibility so it's unsolvable yeah. and now we bring it to an upper layer it also has now responsible and it's also easier to troubleshoot and yeah, well, our initial calculations, because we know what the traditional mean costed us until now, and when we use this means, uh, we, it's about 10 to 1. So, uh, regarding price, it's also really, really strong. Okay, so, um, is this technique um, in the research phase, or has it actually been deployed in your network? Uh, funny you should ask. Uh, the research phase is actually nearly done. Uh, it's now been working for about six months. And for this six months of period, it's for around a distance of 1,000 kilometers, we have an offset of a, an average of 130 nanoseconds. So our research phase is ending. Uh, we are now uh, busy deploying it at at least two 5G sites at different locations where we actually will start uh, the second phase of research, measuring it how it will cope with 5G. After this phase, uh, we are hoping to implement it at 300 5G sites inside Turkey. Okay, sounds exciting. Yes, oh yeah, I'm, uh, I'm more excited than you, so <laughs> I can assure you that. 
So what are the next steps for your DTM overlay approach to become part of a global standard? Okay, uh, well, we already have the two ITUT standards. Uh, we're busy with talks to have it maybe as an alternative standard also presented as the 8275.3, hopefully. Uh, it's a long way to go, but uh, it's a long shot, but we're trying. Uh, we are definitely going to add this in the P1588 working group because I'm a part of that. Uh, uh, the moment it's standardized, you know, what we want, we want what is best for not only operators, but everybody. And spending a lot of this money in legacy networks, yeah, sometimes you might not get the return of investment. And if telcos are spending that money, it means that they have to earn it back. So it's going to affect end users, which are you and me, yeah. paying for something that is too expensive. And this is really a cheaper solution. And a few days ago, I found an analogy for this to explain this better. And uh, yeah, during the space race in the 1960s, uh, the United States astronauts complained to NASA that their pen wasn't usable in space. So the engineers went out of the way, uh, spending millions to create a pen that worked in space. It's brilliant engineering. That is the current standards as well. It's brilliant engineering, nothing wrong with it, but it costs an arm and a leg. And when they asked the Russians, what did you do? And they were like, we used a pencil. And this is, this is the <laughs> pencil, this is nothing yes. else. It works and it doesn't break. And when you need to sharpen it, you sharpen it. And when you need to erase it, you can erase it. And these are the uh, benefits of it. Good, so finally, Umut, um what value does ITSF bring to you as an operator working at the heart of 5G deployment? Okay, well, this is the first time we're here, and uh, as a telco, and me personally, first time. The problem is that the realization that synchronization is a must is not there yet with the telcos, because it was for granted, because of the synchronization requirements. But now it's getting tighter and tighter, yeah, I think, more and more telcos will also come. Realizing that, okay, yeah, current means, don't cut it anymore. And what I, the people that I've met here, that I've seen here, because uh, you don't always meet experts in synchronization, especially uh, in current telco roles. When you talk about it, there's not enough knowledge. But when you're here, and now you finally can talk to people who really know their stuff, I was going to use the other S word, but <laughs> <laughs> they know their stuff. And yeah, it's, it's a delight. You get a total different view of a total new world. And I would advise to all my telco colleagues to at least attend these meetings. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear your positive comments and look oh, forward to seeing you brilliant. next year. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. I hope to present the other results with the 5G sites as well next year. So uh, hope to Good. be here. Umut, thank you very much. Thank you, Carol.